Welcome to Time for Hope, a ministry of Hope for Living Media Church and Bible Study Time Incorporated. Here's your pastor and host, Dr. Frida Cruz. I appreciate you joining us on Time for Hope. I'm Dr. Frida Cruz, your host, and joining me is author, popular speaker, radio host, and the first women's chaplain at Oral Roberts University, Carol Burton McLeod. And we will be discussing her book titled, Guide Your Mind, Guard Your Heart, Grace Your Tongue. Women, especially Christian women, and I'm going to add men, often live with regrets. They regret how they have used their time, how they have spent their money, how much chocolate they have eaten, and most of all, they regret the hurtful words they have spoken to the people they love the most and know the best. Every woman, and I'm going to add men also, with a heart that beats, has spoken unkind words that they wish they could magically take back. You will want to stay with us as Carol and I share powerful strategies based on scripture that will help to cure rotten emotions so that one's words can sound humbly grateful instead of grumly hateful. Carol, it's great having you come all the way from the great state of New York. That's uh, right. Thank you for having me, Dr. Frida to appear on uh, Time for Hope. Appreciate it very much. You've done a tremendous job uh, writing this book that we're talking about today. Actually, when you think about it, it's it's who we are. And you've divided it up, divided us up into uh, three uh, categories, so so to speak. Yes. And I I really, of course, I've gone through the book and I've made great notes and uh, haven't just stayed with your questions that come along uh, with your book and so forth. And I'm really going to encourage our viewers from the very beginning uh, that we, uh, we're going to touch on most of it but just highlight it. They need to get what's in between the lines and not just the highlighting that we do. Although this, the highlighting will help them tremendously if they'll stay, uh, if they'll stay with us as it were. And that leads me to your, actually your introduction. I I went uh, into it and One of the things that's been said in here, uh, and I believe you might, I don't know if you said it or someone else uh, wrote it in your book, uh, that this book might not be for you. Right. (laughs) If, If you live a perfect life, if you've never said something that you wish you could take back, if you've never worried, then this book is not for you. If you've never spouted off an opinion or out of, um, ravaging emotion, then this book's not for you. But if you do wish that you could take back words you've spoken, then this book's for you. If you do know that you worry and fret and stay in a place of anxiety or grief or anger, then this book will be a powerful tool in your life. You know, of all that you've named yes. uh, just now, I would think anger uh, would, uh, there would be the greatest number of people that have problems with anger uh, and speaking uh, while they're angry. You know, the scriptures uh, say to be, we can be angry and sin not. Yes, and then the scripture goes right on to say, don't let the sun go down on your anger. You know, Dr. Frieda, one time I did a Bible study on human emotion because I realized the Bible talks about emotions. So I made a list of emotions that are biblically allowable and ones that are not. Yes, I have that and you, we're going okay. to go over that. I actually wrote those um, wrote those down. And then you, you talk about telling the truth, telling ourselves the truth. And you ask the big question, you know, what are your issues? Mm -hmm. I suspect you mean what are your issues when it comes to your mind, your heart, and your tongue, what, what's behind, uh, yeah, you know? It's important to do a self-examination. If we really want to, to walk in truth and, and to walk in a healthy lifestyle, then we have to examine ourselves mm-hmm. and we have to examine what's going on in the recesses of our brain. What have we allowed to clutter our brains? What's going on in our emotions? What pain from the past have we brought into our present 
and we have to examine the muscle that lies between our pearly whites. We mm -hmm. have to say, what have I said that I need to ask forgiveness for? Well, you know, I, I think in a marriage, for instance, uh -huh. uh, when someone, um, when a couple is interacting negatively or angry with each other, the, the things that they spout off could be coming even from their childhood. The pain of their childhood, something that happened in their childhood, could be talking to them in the same way that the husband or the wife has just talked to them. So there would be more, uh, more intensity involved in what's being spoken then when that would be true. And that's coming from the mind. It is. It's coming from the heart when it that is. happens. It is. And it's coming from not giving your anger proper boundaries like we were talking about. It says don't let the sun go down on your anger. So that means you get to be angry for 23 hours and 59 minutes, but no longer than that. Mm -hmm. Then you're supposed to deal with it, forgive, and move on. Move on is the is the key issue. It is moving on from anything in the past that right. that uh, troubles us mm -hmm. or has troubled us. I always say, put the past in the past. Yes, you can learn from it. Right. Uh, hopefully, learn from it, uh, and you can learn from the past. But you can't. You can't bring it back. You can't recapture it. You can't redo it. In other words, right. it, it's done. Yeah. It's, and so leave it in the past. That's right. And move towards either making the corrections that need to be made or the apologies that need to be given, and so on and so forth. Because when you bring the pain of the past into today or into tomorrow, it's giving your past too much power. And the most powerful force in your life should be the Word of God, should be your relationship with Jesus. And so even our emotions have to come under submission with what the Word says and with having an intimate relationship with Christ. Now, there are good things in the past yes. uh, that we need to maintain uh, and uh, that, of course, can be a positive yes. thing. I had a, an incident just recently uh, that makes me think of that. I was uh, pulling into a parking lot, and I was already there, and this huge ca uh, car or van or whatever was backing into it, and it was getting so uncomfortably close to hitting me until I blew my horn uh, at them. Uh -huh. And uh, they immediately stopped and pulled out and, and started reparking uh, and we both remained safe and you know I was not hit or anything like that. When I got into the store this young man, this really nice uh, young man said, well thank you so much for blowing your horn at me. There's a, he said maybe I was too close and I might have hit you. And I appreciated that yes. so much from him. Yes. But you know what I immediately thought? What? And I told a friend of mine afterward when I was mm -hmm. recounting that, he's had good rearing. There you go. He's had good rearing. Yes. Uh, and he was also giving it a lot of good thought. He mm -hmm. was guiding his, uh, uh, guarding his heart, wasn't he? He was. He wasn't angry with me. No. He was letting his mind guide him mm -hmm. to what he knew uh, that it would be the best thing right. for him to do. You know, when we've had positive things happen in our past, whether it's good rearing or um, a miracle happen or just happy memories, they become strong building blocks for the future and for today, like you saw in that young man's life. But Dr. Frieda, even when we've suffered abuse or pain in the past, when we forgive, when we wash it with the water of the word, when we worship our way through tears, even those things can be a strengthening tool in our lives. When we handle pain the correct way, it becomes a platform for ministry. Mm -hmm. It doesn't subtract from who we are as people. No, no. Uh, God assures us that all things work together for Amen. our good. And mm -hmm. I ass have assured many, many people, this is awful what you're going through through, right. but God, there are things within it God wants you to learn, mm -hmm. and don't miss them. Don't miss what He's, you know, wants you to learn from this, and what you can learn from this that you could actually use to minister to others, and uh, so forth. So, 
in, in that way, uh, we are doing what you say with your book. We're guiding our mind. Yes. We're guarding our heart. And that, of course, gives us control over our tongue, doesn't Exactly. It? And that's the goal. That's the goal. Then we want to, uh, getting out of your introduction, yes. <laughs> we want uh, to move on. Uh, and you uh, have an anchor verse. I do. Uh, for um, er, er, all three of these Free things. Each section, that's and right. I really appreciate the amount of scripture that you have put into your book. Um, I get see lots of books and lots of good books and lots of great authors, but I, I really want this show uh, to carry out God's word and truth I love like that. You, um, you, you know, you refer to that. Mm -hmm. And you hit it very, very uh, definitely throughout your book. You got to go to the word of God. Mm -hmm. You got to go to the Bible. You got to mm -hmm. go to the word of God. Our young people need this today uh, really, really at a great depth. I Think. They really do because they're they're faltering, they're floundering for truth, and they're looking for answers in all the wrong places. And you know, I tell people all the time, Dr. Frieda, listen, I don't have a better idea than God does. Do you? Do what? I don't have a better idea than God does. Oh, absolutely do not. And That's... so we find his ideas in the yeah. Word of God. We oh, find yes. his wisdom there. Yes. And it's there. You can go on a treasure search in the Word of God and come out with pure gold gold for your life. Yes. And so that's what I've tried to do in They're, the book. They are telling me it's time for a break. Okay, great. And we will be right back. Why do you think, feel, and behave the way you do? Because of what you believe about yourself and others. Other factors include personality characteristics, genes flowing down to you from generations past, and learned behavioral and emotional patterns modeled in your early home environment. The way you think and behave is largely determined by the way your parents thought and behaved, and the same was true for them. That is, until you develop an awareness that this is true and resolve to become your own individual and unique person, breaking the learned negative behavioral and emotional patterns. If you are aware of repeated self-defeating patterns that you can't seem to break, if you feel like you are different from other people and that you don't measure up, if you lack a sense of belonging, always feeling like you are on the outside looking in. If you are devoting your life to trying to please, control, rescue, protect, or change your spouse, children, parents, and others. If you continue to experience relationship abuse or failures, anxiety, depression, and fatigue, and if it seems you can never feel loved and accepted by God, no matter how hard you try, you need to take a very close look at all the things that have contributed to your being and behaving the way you are and do. Your beliefs about yourself have been precipitated by what was said to you, expected of you, done to you, or modeled for you. And you pulling it all together and drawing your own conclusion about yourself and your behaviors. Freedom will come when you, number one, face the reality of your present, not your past, life situation. Number two, accept the truth that you don't have to remain in bondage to your past. Three, believe that God is willing and able to heal and deliver you from generational falsehoods which have been handed down to you. Four, seek professional help if you need it. Five, accept personal responsibility to change your thinking and behavioral patterns. Six, seek forgiveness for your own sin and forgive those who have wounded and abused you. And seven, believe God's word when it assures you that in relationship with his son, you are loved and special in 
his family. Thanks for staying with us on Time for Hope. Our guest for today is Carol McLeod, and we're talking about her book, Guide Your Mind, Guard Your Heart, they're all G's, and Grace Your Tongue. And believe me, there is a lot uh, between the covers of this book that any and all of us uh, should know and can use uh, at some time in our life. So I encourage you right away, right away, before we even get started good, to get uh, to, to decide that you're going to get a copy of Carol's book. It's It will be worth your time and the donation that you send uh, to Time for Hope. And um, Carol, um, you had a reason for writing this book. Something spurred you on to write this book, and you've actually admitted it. it's uh, some of what you yourself have had to deal with. Oh, uh, yes. As, as, we're talking as a child of God, as mm -hmm. a Christian, mm -hmm. uh, that you, because if you're not a child of God, you're not a Christian, a lot of these things you're not going to worry about. Uh, but you, uh, you knew that what some of the things that you were feeling and doing uh, we're not right in God's sight, right? That's right. I try to be vulnerable in the book and, and point out my weaknesses in these areas, in my thought life, in my emotions, and in my tongue. You know, Dr. Frida, I went through a deep, dark depression when I was in my mid-30s, and I couldn't climb out of the black hole. I went to see my medical doctor and went to see a counselor, but the thing that helped me the most was the power in the Word of God. I um, had two little boys at the time and I'd play Legos with them with the Bible open between my legs. I would do laundry with the Bible open on the dryer. I was so addicted to the Word of God and still am that I would take scripture verses, put them on three by five cards and laminate them and take them in the shower with me so I'd never be away from the power that's found in the Word of God. So for men and women who are listening today, we all have weaknesses. We're human beings. So if you're struggling in your thought life, if you're a worrier, if you have anxiety, if you have pain from your past, or if your emotions get the best of you. You know, Dr. Frida, I realized I really had a problem when I became a mother. Sometimes you can hide your weaknesses to the world around you until you become a mother. And when I had a two-year-old, I realized, Carol, you have a problem with anger. You are an angry mother because, you know, the primary way we parent is through our words. Isn't that the truth? Yes. It's through the words we speak to our children. So, like we said before, I had to do self-examination and figure out how to be healed yeah. from the mental and emotional part of me. But at the same time with children, uh, you're helping form the kind of parent they will end yes. up being or the kind of things they will experience a feeling mm -hmm. uh, and um, going through and so forth. Now, so you, you started with that, but you weren't willing to just lay that out and say, God be with you and, um, you know, you say that we can change our mindset. We you can. say that, uh, and you call it, uh, I've forgotten what it is that you called it in your book, uh, but it has to do with making our way out of uh, the things that you name in your book, uh, and especially having to do with the mind, the heart, and the tongue, and the tongue being the most deadly if we go to the, the anchor verses and the scriptures that you refer to. And, but you said you don't have to stay there. That's right. See, that's the hope that we want to give yes. out. You don't have to stay there un unless you're not willing to turn to God. Right. If you're not willing to turn to God in the Word, you, you're going to be caught staying there, right? You are. Because because the Lord has the true healing power this side of heaven. You know, he it says in the Bible that he sent his word 
to heal our diseases. So whatever you're going through, whether it's pain from abuse, whether it's the pain of being rejected by a spouse, whether it's dealing with a delinquent child, listen, the Word of God has what it takes to revolutionize the way you're walking through that situation today. It so really let's does. Let's start with the mind. Let's start with the mind. Let's, let's start do with it. The mind. And what's your anchor verse? For My the mind? anchor verse is, as a man or a woman thinks within themselves, so is you he. You see, that comes from uh, Proverbs, the twenty-third chapter. Yep, verse seven. And, the se and uh, verse seven. But if we're going to put some more, add some more to that, yes. we'll go to Philippians uh, mm -hmm. four eight. Finally, whatever is right. See, yes. there's a right and a wrong, and people don't seem to get that today very well, do they? That no, there's a right no. and a wrong. Whatever is pure, oh, purity, that's a thing uh, that is almost a thing of the past, isn't it? It is. Purity. Um, and then whatever is lovely, uh, what is it? whatever is admirable, uh, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, what are we to do? Think, Think about those, those things. things and not the ugly things right. as you were uh, referring yeah. to. Right. Uh, there's uh, Television is presenting a lot of ugliness that our minds can be fastened to, uh, especially those that get involved, and men especially that get involved in pornography. Mm -hmm. uh, that's impurity, uh, that's ugliness, uh, that's fa that helps fasten whatever we see on that, on the tube, uh, or, uh, you know, in movies, as you bring out, mm -hmm. uh, in movies, or even the music we listen to. Right. All of this can affect our minds. It does. You you know, so dealing with our mind, to me, Dr. Frida, is almost a three-step process. First, it's realizing the thoughts that I think today are going to be the person I become tomorrow. As a man thinks within himself, so is he. So that's like the splash of cold water in our faces. Wake up. Your thought life is not hidden. Your thought life determines your very destiny. And Dr. Frida, I want to say this. This is not some new age determinant. This is Bible. The Bible says that whatever you're thinking today will become the reality of your tomorrow. So that's the splash of cold water. The second thing is that we have the mind of Christ. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, our brain gets saved. Um, we, we begin to think the thoughts of Christ. So we become saved, we partner with Christ. The third step is what you just read to me. We have to use mental discipline. We have to give ourselves mental boundaries as to the thoughts we're allowed to think and those we're not allowed to think about anymore. We're not allowed to think about them. Yes, well, um, as you, you bring out over and over and over again in, in your book, even memorizing scripture, right. uh, the thoughts will, uh, will uh, be there when we need them. If we, uh, um, in memorizing scripture and something comes up, we think of temptation. And I think we're leaving out here uh, that we have an evil one. We do. We have an evil one involved in this. His name is Satan. That's right. There's a real devil, a real Satan that is involved in trying to, that's where he starts is yeah. with our mind, isn't it? He does. It? With a temptation. When you think of being tempted, where, where does he have have to start. He starts in our brains. And then, uh, of course, it, it will involve our emotions mm -hmm. if he stays around long enough right. and we let him stay around long enough. Mm -hmm. And uh, it can involve more than our tongues, too. Yes. Uh, these, uh, you know, that our mind is affected and our heart uh, is affected and so on and so forth. Do you believe that we're at the end of can you our believe first it? show? I want our viewers to know that we're just going to pick up next week That's with right. the second show. This book is too full to try to cram into one Thank you so week. Much. So you just stay there, sit there while I uh, share some things from uh, some of our viewers, and then we'll uh, we'll get right back at it. Uh, okay. Come next week, uh, my first one to share with you.
uh, from a viewer says, Dear Dr. Frida, I am asking for prayer, and, and this is when I, because I give the invitation to all of you to share your prayer requests with us, and we take them up during our worship services here on Monday morning, uh, and uh, we take, we take these prayer requests up. So if you haven't shared your prayer request with us, I'm inviting you uh, to do so. This person has, and we've already taken this prayer uh, request to our Heavenly Father, whom we know nothing is with whom nothing is impossible. Dear Dr. Frieda, I am asking for prayer for my 16-year-old grand son. He tried to commit suicide. This is a sad uh, prayer request, and we get many of them, and is now in a mental health facility, and that's a good place uh, to start with something like this. He is very negative and does not like himself, and that could be said of many young people, even many 16-year-olds. Please pray for the Lord to help him and set him free, and this view is knowing what we're talking about, uh, Carol, uh, the, looking to the Lord for help. Uh, even these people can be used of God in this mental health uh, facility, and God uses people in all kinds of areas uh, to, to carry out His purposes, to, to help and uh, serve people, um, but we still have to look to Him. We must look to Him. He is the one that nothing is too big for Him to fix. So she's asking for the right thing here. Please pray for the Lord to help him and set him free. And then I have a word of encouragement uh, that I need to quickly um, share with you. Dear Dr. Frieda, thank you for your ministry, and I thank you for that. Time for Hope and for sharing his love uh, with others. May God bless you and the Time for Hope program. And I greatly appreciate your prayers for myself and for this ministry. And uh, you're sharing uh, it with us by being what I uh, would refer to as a viewer of Time for Hope. Lord willing, we'll be picking up next week uh, with Carol um, McLeod and looking forward to sharing the rest of her book with you. Thank you for watching Time for Hope, a ministry of Hope for Living Media Church and Bible Study Time Incorporated. We offer a free fact sheet with more information on today's topic. Call or write us to get your copy today. The resource we are offering this week is available for a donation of at least $15 to the Time for Hope ministry. Any additional donation you wish to send will be greatly appreciated. Call us at 800-669-9133. Write us at Post Office Box 2169, Spartanburg, South Carolina, 29304. Or visit our website at timeforhope.org. As we continue to give out messages of hope, a financial gift of any amount to support the Time for Hope ministry will be greatly appreciated. When you send a gift to Time for Hope, you are joining in the ministry to which God has called us. It will also enable us to inform and inspire viewers to become students of God's Word and grow closer to Him, and in turn, minister more effectively to others as God gives them opportunity. Look for Dr. Frieda's Scriptural Devotions on our Time for Hope TV ministry Facebook page. Until next time, have a great week, and remember, it is Time for Hope.